Hey guys, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with our Captain Skills update for the Royal Navy Cruiser line for patch 0 0.6.0. .0. In this, we are going to talk about five different possible builds for the Royal Navy Cruiser line and which one you take. Really, there's no wrong answer to this question. And that's, I think, what Wargaming was intending with this patch and the Captain Skills changes. They didn't want to make it so it was so cookie cutter. If you remember in the, the previous patches when we started the Royal Navy Cruiser How to Play series, I basically said that there's like two viable builds for the Royal Navy Cruisers because the lack of HE kind of forced you away from some of the more common cruiser captain skills. Well, that is no longer the case. There's a lot of different ways in which you can spec out your Royal Navy Cruiser. I'm just going to talk about the five that I think probably have the most use in-game. And their use is going to depend entirely upon what you are actually going to be doing in that game. The first two builds that we're going to talk about are going to be anti-aircraft builds. We're then going to go to a destroyer hunting build, then a more balanced build, and then one that is focused entirely on survivability. And again, these are by no means the only way to set up your cruiser. These are just my opinion as to the way I would set up my cruisers for the Royal Navy, just to, to kind of make the ships more viable and more utilitarian. Of course, we are here in the Dragon Port, but we're going to see what Mr. Graham Moore has for us for captain skills here as we talk about them. This first AA build is going to start off with preventative maintenance. And as I explained in the U.S. Battleship uh, skills video, preventative maintenance itself does not reduce the incapacitation of your set of uh, your secondaries or your anti-aircraft build. But what it does do is it allows you to take auxiliary armaments mod one instead of main armaments mod one and auxiliary armaments mod one does increase the hit points of your secondaries and your anti-aircraft build uh, those anti-aircraft guns you know they're a vital part of your anti-aircraft build and certainly i can't see any other skill at this tier that i would take on a royal navy cruiser in fact you will see this on every single build that we talk about today the next one that I'm going to recommend taking is going to be Smokescreen Expert. For, two, for the second tier skills, it really is the only one that makes the most sense, at least right off the bat. Uh, honorable mention to Last Stand, but we'll cover that more in depth in a little bit. That increase in Smokescreen Radius really helps these ships out in, in a survivability standpoint, but it also gives you a little bit more coverage if you needed to suddenly pop smoke to help a friendly or something to that effect. It's not real specific to the anti-aircraft build, I just think that this is one of the few times that this skill is actually useful to a, to a class of ships, and I think that the Royal Navy cruisers benefit the most from it. From there, I'm going to go to basic firing training, which is going to increase the damage per second of all of our AA guns by 20%. I'm going to go to advanced firing training, which is going to increase the range of all of our anti-aircraft guns by 20%. Then I'm going to go to manual fire control for AA, which is going to double our DPS of our 85 millimeter or higher anti-aircraft guns. That is specifically important for the Minotaur and Neptune with those six inch dual purpose guns, but you also have the four inch guns at the lower tiers that benefit from this as well. So manual fire control for AA really helps out in that long range AA DPS, which is a real strong suit of these, these cruisers. From there, the next skill I'm going to take is going to be Concealment Expert, and that's going to reduce the detection range by 12% of these cruisers. And that is more or less a survivability skill than it is anything else. And I just feel that it has a much better place on here than trying to find other skills, because there's not really any other AA-specific skills left. And then to round it out, our 19th point is going to be Priority Target, which lets you know how many ships are currently targeting you with their main battery. And that will let you know when you can kind of duck out of the situation. So that was AA build one. Again, that's preventative maintenance, smokescreen expert, basic firing training, advanced firing training, manual fire control for AA, concealment expert, and priority target. The second build is a little bit more radical in its execution. It's a little bit less focused on survivability and more on outright DPS. Again, it's going to start off pretty much the same. Preventative maintenance, smokescreen expert, we are now switching to superintendent. Then we're going to basic firing training, advanced firing training, manual fire control for AA, and then either last stand, which is going to 
allow the ship to maneuver even if your engines or rudder are taken out, or what I would recommend taking, Adrenaline Rush, which is going to decrease the reload time of all of your armaments for every 1% of hit point you lose. And this skill, right now, I don't think it applies to your anti-aircraft guns. I know it doesn't apply to the secondary guns yet. It is supposed to. It doesn't currently. They are working on fixing that. And I don't know if the patch that came out today, if that was just server maintenance, or if there's actually going to be a patch here in the not-too-distant future to address that. But Wargaming has said that this will eventually apply to all types of armament. I would hope that that would also apply to your anti-aircraft DPS, but I honestly don't know. But again, that secondary, that second AA build is going to be Preventative Maintenance, Smokescreen Expert, Superintendent, which adds that additional charge for all of your consumables, basic firing training, advanced firing training, manual fire control for AA, and either last stand or adrenaline rush. Your choice. This next build is going to be the destroyer hunter build, and you can imagine what it's going to, you know, kind of hover around in its in its skill tree. But starting off at the very top, again, preventative maintenance, smoke screen expert. I'm jumping to superintendent here. And then going to Concealment Expert, that again, for that reduction in Concealment, that's just going to help you get that much closer to Destroyers and remove their ability to get away from you once you've gotten close to them. You know, it's harder for them to get away. They have more distance that they have to cover because you were that much closer to them. And then from there, Radio Location or Radio Position Finder or Radio Location Finder, however you want to word that, I think that... RDF is a very useful skill. It is situational, so it is not always going to be applicable. But in its uses, it does allow you more accurately to pinpoint where a destroyer would be close to you, provided that the destroyer is the closest object to you or closest ship to you. There are certain maps that this would be beneficial it obviously, if you're, you know, a player that has a lot of experience, you're going to kind of have an idea, but this really tells you exactly where a ship will be. You don't have to guess. You will know if there is a ship there or not. And I think that that skill really, you have to give up a lot to get to it, which is why I'm glad it's a tier four skill and not, and not like a tier two or tier three skill. But ultimately I don't see my, my main build focusing around it. It's certainly not the build that I would choose. For my men, for you know, for my Royal Navy cruisers, uh, we'll talk about that. That's actually our next one. From RDF, I'm going to go to Vigilance, which is going to allow us to increase the detection range of incoming torpedoes by a full 25%. And then again, either Last Stand or Adrenaline Rush. And I think both of these two skills you could kind of intermingle depending on where exactly and what exactly you're hunting. I think Adrenaline Rush certainly allows for more interesting gameplay. It is kind of the new hot sauce skill. So, you know, some people will like it. Some people will not. It just kind of depends on how much hit points you're used to operating at. I usually operate in the lower about half of my hit point pool. So this will be very beneficial to me. The next build that we will talk about is going to be the more balanced build. And this is the build that I'm running currently on live. It is also the build that I would recommend until carriers become a bigger thing, in which case then I would probably jump up to the second AA build with uh, Adrenaline Rush. And this build starts off again the same, Preventative Maintenance, Smokescreen Expert, Superintendent, Concealment Expert, Advanced Firing Training, Adrenaline Rush, and then Basic Firing Training. And that will give you your 19 points. And I, this right here gives you the best mix between any aircraft, range and DPS, secondaries, which for the Minotaur isn't a big deal because there are none, but for the other ones there are. Survivability, and then that outright DPS improvement. And Adrenaline Rush is so much fun to mess around with on a ship that has a 2.8 second reload time. You know, you lose half your hit points, it goes down even further. And this is a ship that already has insanely high DPS and does a lot of damage. I think that that's going to be a fun skill to throw in there. This build overall gives you a good mix of basically everything that makes a Royal Navy cruiser work at its best without sacrificing too much in survivability. You're still relying on concealment 
to survive, but you know, that's definitely workable. That's not unreasonable by any stretch of the imagination. The last build is an outright survivability build. This focuses almost entirely on either detecting torpedoes or surviving engagements with other ships. And it starts off with preventative maintenance, smokescreen expert, last stand. Then it goes up to superintendent, concealment expert, high alert, which is going to reduce the reload time of the damage control party by 10%. So you'll be able to spam R more frequently. Jack of all trades, which is going to reduce the reload time of all mounted consumables 5% or an additional 5% on top of the 10% for the damage control party. And then vigilance. And that build, you know, you give up a lot in the offensive capabilities to get those defensive capabilities and it doesn't prevent the ship from getting just outright deleted. But I think that that build, you know, for some players, especially that if you're starting out in these cruisers, that might be a better way to start off in the Royal Navy Cruiser simply because it does allow you to survive some of those engagements with a little bit better, you know, combat effectiveness. You have a little bit more hit points coming out of those. For players that are more experienced with cruiser play, especially with Royal Navy cruiser play, I think this is going to be a bit overkill. And I think you'll rather have the more offensive capabilities of either the DD Hunter or more balanced role. Or if you're playing in competitive play with one, you know, you might want that any aircraft build. But anyway, those are five of what I feel are going to be the most common builds with these. Obviously, there's variations on a theme and everybody's going to have, you know, their own opinion on what's what. I'd like to hear from you guys what you guys think down in the comments. So please throw them down there. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe. And thank you guys for watching.